Learning is challenging. It is very difficult for everyone. Even very smart people have to work incredibly hard. But why do people struggle so much when they're trying to learn something new? In this video, I'm going to give you reasons people struggle to learn. And the beautiful thing is, none of these reasons really directly apply to the subject. I'm going to use mathematics as the example, but you can apply this to computer science, to physics, to anything. Lack of balance is one of the biggest causes of failure for people who are trying to learn something new. Balance is so important. Many, many years ago, I used to work with this guy. His name was Joe, and we had so much fun. He was a great guy. But his mantra, his life mantra, was always balance. You need to live a balanced life. He was right, and you can apply that directly to learning mathematics or any other subject. It's very important to have balance in your life. You want to be able to do things that you enjoy in life as well. You want to be able to go outside and go for walks. If you like playing video games, play video games. If you have a significant other, spend time with them. Balance. Balance is key. And this is a hard one because if you're trying to learn a difficult subject, we all know you have to spend a lot of time on that subject in order to learn. But the more time you spend on that subject, the more your life is being pushed out of balance. So what you have to do is you have to study a certain amount of time and restrict yourself. I always think a good starting point for people is 30 minutes a day. Start with 30 minutes a day of mathematics, of physics, of computer science, of whatever it is you're studying and balance your life, it will make a difference in the long run. Ineffective study habits are often a reason that people struggle. This is one that is a little bit easier to fix. For all practical purposes, you can fix it right away. Start by one, doing math every day for at least 30 minutes, but maybe no more than an hour. Two, doing math at the same time every day. Find a time that works for you. Three, do math in a distraction-free location. Find somewhere that you can sit down alone and just focus and try to give it half an hour a day. It is life-changing. Poor time management. This is one, again, that many people struggle with a lot. Basically, this is about not getting stuff done when it needs to get done. For example, if you're in college and you're taking a class and you have a test the next day and you haven't started the homework, that's poor time management. I was never perfect when it came to time management, but I was always pretty good and I got stuff done and I did pretty well. So try to stay on top of things. Don't fall behind. Ask yourself why you're doing this. Why are you studying math? Remind yourself of the reasons that your success is important. Fear of failure is one that affects a lot of people. For me, I always used fear as a motivator. My fear of failure caused me to study perhaps too much which led to burnout. You want to use that fear of failure and you want to concentrate it and focus on timed study sessions. So don't be afraid to fail. One of the big things for people is they'll have a failure. They'll fail a test, they'll fail a class, and then they'll have to retake that test or retake that class. And because you failed before, it's so much harder to succeed. And I really want to emphasize that because if you're watching this video and you're successful at math, it's, it's hard to understand until you've had some serious failure. When you've experienced serious mathematical failure, you know what I'm talking about. It's really hard to build your confidence back up. Just know this, keep trying. And once you have that first success, it's just going to create more success. Don't give up. Insufficient support systems. Many people have no support system at all. They have no family support, they have no friends, and their teachers are not very good and they're not supportive. So what do you do if you find yourself in a situation where you feel like you have no support for your studies? No one around you cares that you're studying. You have to remind yourself why you're doing it, and you have to be strong. You have to be strong. When, when I was in college, I told myself that I would teach myself mathematics. And that way, every time I encountered a teacher, that I felt didn't like me or I just didn't understand, I would tell myself, it doesn't matter because it's all on me. I'm responsible for my learning. This is my life. I'm gonna make it happen. It's your life. You have to make it happen. Obviously, it's better if you have a strong support system. And if you're in college, you know, reach out to your classmates, 
reach out to your teacher. But if you're alone in this world and you have no one else, just know that you can do it because it's your life and it matters more than anything because it's yours. Math anxiety, this is one that people suffer from and it can just creep up out of nowhere. You can be fine for a couple of courses and then you can start taking some other courses that are a little bit harder. Maybe you have a different teacher and boom, all of a sudden you have the test jitters. It happens to the best of us. It's happened to me. It's happened to people I know that are absolutely brilliant. All of a sudden one day they just choke and they get nervous every time they see a test. So how do you combat this? The secret is practice and time. Once you practice and study and get that first success, you're going to get over your fears. The best way to get over any fear is to overcome it. So the best way to get over your fear of failing is to take a test and not fail it. Just know that there is hope. And once you have that first success, it's really gonna help your math anxiety. Repetitive tasks. This is one that we really can't control too much. If you go to college and take, say, a college algebra class or a calculus class or a trig class or any class in college, you're going to do repetitive problems because math is tough and there's only so much time in a classroom. So there's only so many things that you can be shown in class. And so typically, you know, you go to class, they teach you a certain amount of information, certain types of problems, and then you go home and you practice those problems. And so a lot of times you don't really get to see some of the more interesting mathematics. You might say, well, whose fault is that? Is it the teacher's fault? Is it society's fault? It's actually nobody's fault. It's just because there's only so much time in a classroom and certain things have to be taught. So you can't really explore some of the more interesting areas of math. So a lot of times people will learn math and it just feels very repetitive and boring. But let me give you a little secret. Whenever the math feels boring to you, if you're doing mathematics and it feels boring or you're learning anything and it feels boring, well, that's how you know you know it well because it's so easy that it becomes boring. Your source of motivation is huge. Are you motivated by simply the thought of learning and just self-fulfillment? Do you want to learn simply for the sake of learning? That is the best reason to learn. Or maybe you want to learn because it's important because you're going to get a degree so you can get a job. That is a reason to learn. If the reason comes within you, that is the best reason. If your motivation for learning comes from an outside source, maybe your parents want you to learn, maybe you're feeling pressured and they want you to be a doctor, or maybe they want you to be an engineer, or whatever, it doesn't matter, but you want that motivation to come from within you. You need to find a reason why it's important to learn the material, because that's what you can fall back on whenever you're feeling demotivated. We all have bad days, we're human, nobody is perfect. So if you wake up tomorrow and you know you have to study and you don't want to, you need to be able to tell yourself something that is going to get you motivated, something that is going to get you to study. And that's where that internal reason, that internal desire for learning has to come from. It has to come from within you. Lack of personal relevance. This is one that I have seen a lot, especially as a teacher, a lot of times students aren't really motivated if they can't see why what they're learning is relevant in the real world. Personally, I never had a problem with this because I always loved mathematics simply for the sake of loving mathematics. It is a beautiful subject and I love it dearly. You need to find something that you love and I think that will make a big difference. Also remember that Whenever you're trying to learn something new and you're in a classroom setting, you're only going to learn certain things because those are the things that are supposed to be taught for whatever reason. And there's only a certain amount of time in the classroom to learn those things. That's why self-study is so great because you can learn other stuff on your own and it really helps you become better in the classroom and out of the classroom and it helps you learn more information. Inadequate sleep and self-care. This is one that is huge, and I think most people don't think about it. I have known students that study all the time. 
they sleep six hours a night, and they do really well, but eventually they get to a point where they burn out. It is not good. The smartest guy I ever knew was extremely balanced, and he took care of himself. He would show up to class, he would bring his food, and he would eat food in class. He would sit there with a knife and a fork and eat some delicious smelling food, and he always finished his homework, and he always got A's. Mr. Perfect. I always strived to be like him, but I was never able to get there. So you want to try to be like that. You want to emulate those people who seem to be perfect, those people who seem to have a good head on their shoulders. They're always on time. They're always doing the homework. They're never stressed, and they're always doing awesome. That's who you want to be like. And I think self-care is a big part of that. Make sure you get enough sleep. Make sure you get enough exercise. Make sure you get some social time. Remember, life is about balance. I made this video because I know how hard it is to learn something new. I know how hard it is to learn mathematics. I've studied mathematics for a long time, and I've seen a lot of students who study mathematics, and I've seen how they study, I've seen the things they do, I've seen how they struggle, and I've seen the mistakes they make. Hopefully after watching this video, you can learn from it, and you can do better, you can be more successful, and you can have a better life. Good luck to you. And if you have any advice for anyone, maybe I forgot something, which I'm sure I did, leave a comment below. Until next time, good luck, and take care.